and welcome to Live Coding. Today I'm going to be doing FizzBuzz, uh, and we're going to do it TDD. Yeah, TDD is Test Driven Development. Test Driven Development has three phases, writing a failing test, making that test pass, and then refactoring the code. We are going to do that today. Now the first part of this that I like to do uh, for test driven development so that I can get quick and immediate feedback is turn on Visual Studio's live testing, which is under the test menu, live testing, and let's go ahead and start that. Now we'll see over here in the gutters on the left hand side these round half filled circles. Those are resharper test runners. So if we click on them, we'll see it says run all, which will run all the tests in this class, or I can run them individually. And here is the icon by our Visual Studio live test runner, or live testing. I also have NCrunch installed, which does live testing as well. I will use that for larger projects. I personally do not quite trust live testing. It works well, but I've seen it uh, not produce the results I expect frequently enough that I like something else to confirm its behavior. I will run NCrunch and live testing at the same time, uh, as well as verify both of them using ReSharper. So trust our tools, but it's a trust but verify situation. For this, for uh, <coughs> straight TDD, I've used live testing enough that I trust it for this kind of code. So what do we want to do? We want to write a test. <coughs> we want to test for FizzBuzz. Well, what is FizzBuzz? We should probably explain that. So in FizzBuzz, <coughs> a nice little math game, we want to take a number, we want to take a number and return a string of that number. So as an example, if we were given one, we want to return one. If we are given two, we want to return, that's actually a string two there, we want to return two. Or if we're given two, we want to return the string two. Now, that's pretty straightforward. I'm sure we could all solve that in our sleep. But the next one is if we want to, if we're given a number that's a multiple of three, we return fizz. For example, for three, we will return three. And for six, sorry, it's been a long week. For three, we'll return fizz, and for six, we will return <coughs> fizz. I really should have this written out ahead of time. <coughs> Search for the video. Uh, following that, if we're given a number that is a multiple of five, we're going to return buzz. An example. We're given five, we'll return buzz. We're given 10, we'll return buzz. Pretty straightforward. <coughs> and this is called fizz buzz because if we are given a number that is a multiple of three and five, we're gonna return Fizz buzz. Now in the <coughs> game that this is based off of, it's say fizz or say buzz or say fizz buzz. When the number as you go around is this multiple. So in this case, like if we give it 15, we will get fizz buzz. If we give it 30, we'll get back fizz buzz. 
I bet that is massively a shocker. Okay, so that is the problem we are going to do today. And let's go and run our test. So this is test room development. We don't do any refactoring until we have all passing tests. And this, this that we have, this isn't a test. This is a stub. It passes, it doesn't count. It's not a valid test. So let's get ourselves a valid test. I like to use a style of testing known as arrange act assert where we will first arrange the conditions of the test. Now the only one for this is that we're gonna have um, some input that we're gonna provide. And in this case, as our examples up above here, show we're gonna return the string one. Then, or we're gonna return the int, we're gonna provide the int one. And then we're gonna get a string back I like to use actual, most testing frameworks when you assert have an expected value and an actual value. So I like to get my return, the result of my act to be named actual, follows naming conventions. Then I'm gonna call some method. I don't know what I wanna call it. It's a fizzbuzz. So I'm gonna call it fizzbuzz for now. I will provide it my input. <clears throat> and according to the strict application of three rules of, of uh, test driven development, I would consider this a full test. I have a compilation failure. I should at this moment, I could at this moment create fizzbuzz as a method that takes an input return to string. Uh, in this case, I'm not going to do that. I do have another video coming that will be a very strict, uh, a very strict version of TDD by uh, or the three rules of TDD. It's very strict. Uh, it's fun. I enjoy doing it, but I don't want to do it in this one. Uh, it will be a, another video. We will be able to see it. But in this case, we're going to create a full test and then get everything working. And part of that full test is asserting. We want to assert that some things are equal. We expect a one back for the one we provide. <clears throat> not for the one we provide, for the one we actually got back. For our actual. Eventually I'll spell it correctly. So we can see here expected, it actually gives us a tag. Actual is named as the variable. So if we look at our r equal here, we can see that the second parameter, possibly c, um, is named actual. And since our name matches, it doesn't give us the parameter name hint. I found that out uh, in an earlier attempt to record this. It's quite interesting. So now I have my test. It's not failing or it's not compiling, so I need to make it compile. I'm gonna create my method, returns a string, takes an int, input's good enough, throw in an exception. Hey, and now we have failures. Our test is failing. Fabulous, why is it failing? It is failing because, and we mouse over the name here, it threw our exception, which we can see. So it's our, we know why it's failing, but it's not failing because our, our test says it fails. A valid failure of a test is that our assert fails. So we actually have to make it fail our assert before we consider it a failing test and can actually make it pass. <coughs> so now, when we look at why we failed, we get that we expected the string one and we got an empty string. So our test is failing for the reason we expect. So now let's make it pass. There we go, passing test. Part of test driven development is doing the simplest thing possible to make the test pass and, and then write another failing test. And as you build up a suite of failing tests, you'll start to see patterns in the code. And it's these patterns that we need to see before we start refactoring to more general solutions. If we try to jump ahead to what we think the general solution would be, we might be wrong. Uh, FizzBuzz is a fairly simple example. I could successfully write the, the solution without any tests. But A, this is a TDD demo. And B, 
it's very important to get muscle memory in place um, for writing a test, taking the smallest step, the factoring. And once you have this muscle memory in place, production code is produced much faster, much more effectively, and, much, and the resulting code is less complex. It's not always simple, but it is less complex than if you just attempted to write a solution. It has been every time for me. And I can write some really clever code, really clever solutions. Uh, TDD helps me uh, write more understandable, more readable code. And that's a critical thing that we need from our code is for it to be understandable. Now, I've just kind of skipped a step. I got passing tests, and I started talking, and I didn't refactor. So now I'm going to look at refactoring. Okay, I'm going to look at my production code first. And I'm not really seeing anything I want to refactor. Visual, uh, ReSharper is giving me a hint that this is unused, but it's part of the requirements. We need to take an int. So I'm not going to refactor that out yet. Return to string, we work here. Uh, one of the things I do like to have in my production code, I, would, I like my methods small, so I like to turn them into expression bodies. Uh, and it works well. But when I know that I'm going to be writing more code, I prefer to leave it as an expression body. There's a couple things here. One is my test method uh, is poorly named. So I'm going to rename it. And I like to use my tools for this to ensure that it is a safe, provable refactoring. I will get into Arlo's Git notation in a future video. But it is fantastic. Look it up. Look that up, Arlo's Git Notation is fantastic to help identify how you're changing things. It'll help you make smaller commits um, so that you can accurately identify. Small commits are awesome, but that's not what we're doing today. Today we are writing a test that given um, an int one, given when I actually don't know the given one syntax. I'm just going to do my old way. Buzz <coughs> should turn string one when int one. Given int one. This is a should return string one given int one. <clears throat> and there's my new test. And, and now we have it renamed. So ReSharp is giving us a couple suggestions here. One, eh, I mean, we can make it const. It gets rid of it, cleans it up a little bit, makes it a little happier. I'm okay with it. Uh, one of the things a colleague likes to do, because this is simple, we can actually reduce this down to one line. We can say that uh, assert r equal one is equal to the fizzbuzz output. When you use a tool called fluent assertions, it actually reads a little bit cleaner. I don't like how that reads, so I'm going to leave it in this state. Three lines, so we can clearly see, as this is kind of a demonstration video, our arrange, our act, and our assert as an ideal we should have one act statement and one assert statement in our test. We can arrange things, and, and sometimes that can be, the, the more you have to arrange, the more complex that is, the less ideal that test is. It probably is, has too much. Your code is probably not decoupled effectively. It's probably some dangerous code to be changing. But when you have a smaller range, a single act and a single assert, we're, we're in a pretty good state. Uh, we can at least refactor the code into cleaner structures. We can change the design of the code, the structure of the code safely. It, it, or more likely, we can change it safely. So we want the minimal amount of code in a test as we can. I strive to have a single assert. I require that I have a single act. Sometimes when my arrange and my acts are duplicates, then I'll, I'll add additional asserts. Uh, into the same test method, but never more than one act statement. 
We want to make sure we're doing one thing when we test it. <clears throat> so that is the first, that is the explanation of TDD and the first test. Which is fantastic. Uh, and that is actually where I'm going to end this video. We're at about 15 minutes of me blathering on and typing some code. So I will bring up, I, I will be doing all of FizzBuzz in these videos. And hopefully you will see more soon. Thank you.